Howdy everybody, I'm Tom Vassell. Welcome to the Dice Tower. Look Back is the name of this show, and it's a show where I go back a year, five years, ten years, and twenty years. Tell you about the reviews I reviewed then, and what I think about them now, if I think about them at all. So let's jump back twenty years ago, and we have X-Bugs. Now this was remade a couple times, first in the Micro Mutants and then Micro Monsters. But X-Bugs is essentially tiddlywinks with powers. Although I was talking to some kids the other day and realized I didn't even know what tiddlywinks were. Ah, the days. So you basically are flicking the bugs at each other and then they, how they land. There's different sizes. They have special powers. It's fine. It's not an amazing game, but 5, 6.5. What's it to ya? This was also remade into a game called Say What, where you're ranking five things and your opponent, everyone's trying to guess how you're going to rank these five things. There's a lot of these games. This one, again, fine, a 6.5. King's Gate. This is from the Fantasy, the, uh, F Fantasy Flight Silver Line series. And it's one of the ones that people have forgotten a lot. It's basically a bunch of tiles and you're placing these around, surrounding things. It wasn't a bad game. From Reiner Knizia, 7 out of 10. And Formula Motor Racing from GMT Games, which they're most known for the war games. This is not a war game at all. It's a racing game, but it's a very small game. And it's about positioning. A nice little positioning game. I move to the front. And, you know, you're trying to have your cars go to the front, other people's cars go to the back. 7 out of 10. All right, 10 years ago, I took a look at Agent Hunter. This is from Mike Elliott, an AEG two-player game. Eh, fine, 6 out of 10. The Little Prince, Make Me a Planet. Well, from Powerhouse Design Team, Antoine Bauza and Bruno Catala, based on the very popular, you know, stories of The Little Prince. This was a nice little enjoyable... Almost um, lethargic, lethargic's the wrong word, uh, zen-like game. 7 out of 10. Pathfinder Adventure Game. It's Rise of the Rune Lords. So it's been 10 years since this game came out. I remember the hype on this game was huge. And it's, it's fun, and I've never gone beyond the basic set. I get it. They've made a gazillion expansions. Paizo has, you know, and you, you're going through and you're playing through cards. I think it could be better... Um, done with the rolling of dice and stuff, but it's a nice little system. 7 out of 10. Lost Legends. This is another game from Mike Elliott. This is a cooperative game, um, but it's really hard. And because of that, I dropped it a bit from an 8 to a 7 because I just don't want to keep going back to this same idea. You're going through getting monster and fighting, getting equipment and fighting monsters, but I don't know. It hasn't held up as well as I like. 7 Card Slugfest. This is from whatever universe Level 99 Games has. They have these same characters. And this is just playing cards as fast as you can in different piles and then resolving those piles. It's really silly, but I found it to be a lot of fun. 7.5. And then Star Wars Queen's Gambit. Now, this obviously came out more than 10 years ago, but 10 years ago when I reviewed it, still an amazing, terrific game based on the first episode of Star Wars. And just I just played this uh, a few months ago, and it still holds up 8.5. All right, five years ago, I reviewed Ivion, the hero crafting card game, which was just remade through Kickstarter. And my biggest problem with the game was how it looked, but I still thought it was pretty good. Seven out of ten. Yellow and Yangtze. This is the sequel to um, Tigers and Euphrates. It's a hexagon set of squares, but it plays very, very similar. My, my thoughts on this game waffle quite a bit, but seven out of ten. Pling Plong. Now, this one's not going to seem like a bunch of a game. You're bouncing ping pong balls into these little cups. But this one I still have because it's one of those times where if I have a bunch of kids, I need something to do with them. This works really well. 7 out of 10. Newton. A point, um, not point salad, but, you know, the, the these designers and the theme of this has nothing to do with it. You're, but you're playing a bunch of cards in front of you, kind of running through those cards. I really like that concept. And it always feels like there's lots of fun things to do in Newton. 7.5. Empires of the Void 2. Interestingly enough, this is one of the first live plays we did on the channel with uh, Ryan Lockett, and I really like this one. Uh, Empires of the Void, the first one, is the game that put Red Raven on the map, but this is a much more streamlined, better version of the game. 8 out of 10. And then Architects of the West Kingdom. The, wow, the West Kingdom trilogy five years ago now. Doesn't feel like that. This game is really, really well done. I've dropped it just a bit just because of how rankings shift and change, but I still think it's an excellent game at an 8.5. All right, last year, I took a look at Monuments. 
not, oh man, I thought it'd be so cool with these monuments and stuff, but there's a lot of problems with this game. It has such cool ideas, but it doesn't feel balanced. There's, it doesn't play very well. Five out of 10. Founders of Tuatuacan is another one that just, the game itself isn't, this is not very interesting. And it's, um, Board and Dice has made a lot of good games, but they made some games I think that have fallen pretty hard, and this one is one, five out of 10. USPS, the Great American Mail Race. I think it has some problems, especially in multiplayer. Um, and you're just going around delivering mail. Mass market game, I think some people enjoy it. It just, I found it to be okay. Six out of 10. Ticket to Ride San Francisco, 6.5 I gave this, which is like, what? Do you hate this game? Because Ticket to Rides are usually ranked very high. I think I'm just a little tired of these little ones and they're just starting to do the same thing. Hand Hand Wombat, I expected this game to not be great and it was pretty funny. Everyone's blindfolded and putting things there, but someone's a traitor is one of the few games that's more fun to watch than it is to play a seven out of 10. The Spill, not necessarily funny, has a cool dice tower with oil and stuff falling into the ocean and you gotta rescue animals. A nice cooperative game, seven out of 10. Thunder Rolls, uh, <laughs> this name still makes me laugh every time. A racing game um, with big giant cars. It could play smoother. There's some clunkiness to the gameplay. Other than that, it's really fun. Seven out of 10. Mythic Mischief. Hey, they're just about to launch the uh, second version of this, which is some more factions to play Mythic Mischief, but this very chess-like style game. I think the game is hurt sometimes because it looks like a silly, ooh, you know, monsters fighting witches, fighting whatever, and it's much more thinky like that. And it, the two-player game's really growing on me, a 7.5. Longboard, Reiner Knizia card game uh, in which you're just trying to play different surfboards in front of you. Has a feel of one of his older games and I liked it. Eight. And then finally, Ready, Set, Bet. It's been a year since I've reviewed this game and it has become one of my favorite games of all time. I gave it a 9.5. It's a 10. 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. I love playing Ready, Set, Bet. It's my most played game in the last 12 months by a mile. So that was an easy one to give a rating to. Anyhow, there you go. Those are reviews that I did 1, 5, 10, and 20 years ago. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Tom Vassell, and this has been Look Back on the Dice Tower.